Hi folks, it's Pastor Jordan Counts, Park Avenue Baptist. It's such a beautiful day, and I've been trying to get out sometime to get a picture of some of those beautiful red buds before they uh, go out of bloom. Today I'm going to talk about uh, another one of the 33 things that occur at the moment of salvation. And today I want to talk about our heavenly citizenship. But first, let's say a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your son Jesus and the forgiveness that is available through his work on the cross and your, his raising, being raised from the dead. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit that's with us today as we believe. We ask, Lord, that you would touch the hearts and homes of those who are hearing this message that they would know a sense of your peace, of your healing touch to be upon their family and body, mind, and spirit. And we ask in Jesus' name for the healing to continue in this land as we do our part and we ask for a, a divine intervention to rid this world of the effects of the COVID-19 COVID virus. We humbly and expectantly ask in Jesus' name, amen. A quote from the book, uh, The Rock That Is Higher, about our heavenly citizenship. We are all strangers in a strange land, longing for home, but not quite knowing what or where home is. We glimpse it sometimes in our dreams, or as we turn a corner, it sometimes suddenly is there. It's a strange, sweet familiarity. It vanishes almost as soon as it comes, but it's there. That's a Madeline Laingo quote. Where is our home? As followers of Christ, consider Philippians 3, 19 and 20. They are headed for destruction. He's talking to those who are not in the kingdom. Their God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things, and they think only about this life here on earth. But we are citizens of heaven, where the Lord Jesus Christ lives, and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior. Here's some verses that talk about our citizenship. Some additional verses. Luke 10, 20. But don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. He's talking about the power we have when we start walking with God in his spirit. Rejoice, he says, because your names are registered in heaven. That's more important. No, you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to countless thousands of angels in a joyful gathering. That's Hebrews 12, 22. As we live on this earth, do our priorities reflect the anticipation and excitement for eternity as we heard talked about in Philippians 3.20? Why? And why not? I believe it's when we come to Christ and start seeking Him more, He opens that eye in our, of our hearts and we have an excitement and expectation. Even though we live as uh, citizens to make this world a better place. Ephesians 2.19 So now you Gentiles, that's those who were not Jews. We could say today is anyone who's not in the, the Judeo-Christian faith. As you live, so you now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with, with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. It's Ephesians 2, 19. So consider this. As followers of Christ, what our status is as we journey through our years here on earth. What is our status? 
we are resident aliens. I love that term because sometimes we get upset about those who weren't from here. But as we come to Christ, come to God through Christ, you become citizens, residents of God's divine reign, now and forever. Revelations 21, 1 through 3. Listen to the third one especially. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had dis disappeared, and the, her and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. Again, Revelations 21 through 3. And I also like a passage from Revelations that you can look up later where God is actually described as being the only light necessary. Hmm. Powerful. I would ask you today to use these verses as a focal point for your time with God, to express praise to God for the privilege, for the excitement of living forever in the presence of God. Hey, Jesus loves you, and so do we. I'll talk to you again soon. God bless.